Hello all, the practitioner here. I was uh, doing a little thinking again about the uh, whole uh, bullet, about the whole um, skepticism versus pseudoscience bit again. You know, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's nice to uh, go back over my own. Uh, sometimes it's nice to go back over my own thoughts on stuff and see if I'm actually anywhere nearer to a uh, an answer on any of these questions. You know, um. I was doing some thinking recently, and this is not a, this is a, um, this is coming from one skeptic to another, but I've been doing some thinking lately about something that uh, Chris French said in a phone conversation I had with him a while back. He was saying that parapsychology is a science because as long as you are applying the scientific method and attempting um, under rigorous conditions to test for a, uh, you know, a uh, evidence or lack thereof of, uh, to, uh, of, of some sort of paranormal claim, then that by definition is parapsychology. You know that the, the 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 definition of parapsychology is testing using the uh, for psi powers using the scientific method. Now, this is a this is a re, uh, a thought which is um, I've done some serious thinking lately, and uh, you know um, again you all know my criticisms about the uh, about the experimenter observer effect, and uh, you know and and there's been some newer evidence which suggesting that there may have been uh, inappropriate use of statistical paradigms in psychology in general. And these same uh, arguments may apply to parapsychology or apply to, you know, these areas of, so, the, you know, the, the issues may not have even been all the methodological flaws and, and frauds that, have may, uh, that, that people have been accusing of, but may have just been simple, uh, really stupid mistakes like, uh, like uh, inappropriate statistical tools uh, or, or chance factoring or stuff like that to explain significant results. But anyway, regardless of all that, regardless of all that, there's been uh, one major crux of what, uh, of what has been getting at with me. Do we or do we not attempt? To, uh, um, do we or do we not attempt to apply the scientific method um, to even? Uh, do we even bother attempting to test for these type of uh, uh, claims? Do we? Do we even bother? In short, was the one million dollar challenge and, and and every other skeptic challenge that is you know from Harry Houdini clean through to uh, the BC skeptics challenge where I live or or wherever it is you know is testing a legitimate? Um, is testing for psi phenomena or even testing these claims a legitimate exercise? Should we just dismiss these claims off the bat and not give them a chance to uh, provide evidence, or should we even, te uh, uh, you know, should we test for these claims in the first place? The couple of things which are really bugging me about this are, for example, the um, uh, the criticisms. Um, uh, uh, for example, uh, one of the biggest ones, which is uh, which has been really bugging me, is the the reason uh, uh, um, the uh, is the clarification as to. What, you know, um, the one which in particular has been bugging me, uh, which is uh, the real crux of this, is the $1 million challenge. The fact that it's going to be up in two years, and the fact that uh, no doubt in history it's going to be recognized as a scientific uh, a, a, a challenge of testing under scientific protocols. You know, scientific testing for psi powers, which turned up nothing. But parapsychology, which has used... Um, you know, a parapsychology which has uh, which has had much the same criticism. Uh, you know, but par parapsychology is going to be deemed a pseudoscience, or already has been deemed a pseudoscience. Here's a couple of questions I have about the one million dollar challenge compared to parapsychology, which I really think need answering, and which I really have, um, you know, which, which and skeptic uh, investigation, uh, regardless, which really have me uh, perplexed here. Uh, the first one. Um, one of the largest criticisms of the of, para, uh, of parapsychology is the claim that the bulk of the evidence is um, the, the bulk of the evidence um, is through uh, is through uh, methodological flaws, um, lack of a theory for testing. You know, lack of a theory uh, to explain results being tested. So effectively, you're testing for a negative. Uh, you know, th this is a flaw, um, and that uh, and that a large chunk of the results lack peer review or you know publication bias or stuff like that. Now. These three major criticisms. Uh, let me let me ask some questions about the one million dollar challenge. One, yes, there is a, a board of scientists and statisticians who come along and help Randy devise a protocol. But has any of the uh, has any of the one million dollar challenge tests ever been submitted to a scientific journal for peer review? So how do we know that methodological flaws and statistical technique, uh, you know, and, and inappropriate statistical techniques were not used in this given circumstance as well? The second question I have: lack of a theory, um, lack of a theory and definition of a negative. If um, if par if exploring for psi or paranormal abilities is based on uh, do, is based on the definition of a negative, i.e., blocking all known uh, conventional channels, blocking all known conventional channels, 
then um, uh, uh, rather than having a uh, you know rather than actually having a theory for it. Um, if this is not, if defining a negative and then attempting to test for a negative by, say, a statistically significant effect, um, when uh, you know when they, um, you know, basically looking for an unknown variable and then dumbing that unknown variable paranormal, if that is unscientific, if that is fallacious, then does not that criticism apply to the one million dollar challenge because of the fact that it has no working theory uh, for testing for these paranormal claims? Um, as it as it quite clearly states in the challenge FAQ, they are not uh, the, the one million dollar challenge is not interested in theories as to how the paranormal claims work. So, if um, isn't by definition uh, putting controls in place and then sit and then waiting for a uh, waiting for a, a result, um, still uh, you know waiting for a result, uh, isn't that still testing by defining a negative? Aren't these the exact same criticisms leveled at parapsychology? Now, by the same definition, the $1 million challenge is not the only skeptic challenge. There have been scientific tests conducted by, uh, there have been scientific tests uh, conducted by, um, uh, there, uh, by, uh, by various skeptic organizations, including the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, formerly known as the Committee for Skeptical Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal. Um, the uh, one example is the Russian girl uh, who claimed she had x-ray eyes, etc., on medical claims. So, my question is, even though, um, isn't this the exact same type of testing that the parapsychologists were doing? And yes, the skeptics claim that they have better methodology than the parapsychologists did, but if they're lacking peer review, how do we know that their methods are actually any better? Um, is there not a, um, you know, is there not a variable in there which, or, or even an inappropriate statistical technique, which could be influencing the results in a negative form? Um, again, I'm not... I, I'm not advocating this as evidence that psi powers are real. I am questioning the position. I am questioning the position that a large amount of skepticism seems to be taking uh, pertaining to meth uh, pertaining to uh, criticisms against, para against parapsychology that appear to be on the same side um, uh, uh, the, the skeptic researchers have been doing. Example. Um, uh, another example of this would be would be the concept. That uh, would be the concept that the um, that Chris French and Richard Wiseman um, are two prominent skeptic anomalistic psychologists who yes they do do studies which uh, attempt to determine uh, attempt to ascertain the uh, the uh, psychological or or neurological mechanisms behind paranormal experience. However, when they are still testing paranormal claims such as the telephone telepathy experiment that Chris uh, French attempted to replicate a while back, is that not still uh, working on the basis of defining a negative? Um, isn't that still working on the basis of defining a negative? Uh, and if so, and even though, uh, and though uh, their results are published in peer-reviewed journals, much like the, uh, much like many of the results of parapsychologists are as well, either in mainstream or in their niche journals, uh, aren't the same uh, criticisms there uh, available in skeptic work that is in, per in proponent work? I have a real. Um, I guess my question is though, is that now I have a real serious problem here. Um, you know, now I have a real serious problem looking at this because if the if the same criticisms can be leveled against the skeptic work as the um, as the proponent work, I'm beginning to question whether or not we should have even uh, you know uh, back when spiritualists made their claims or back when people started claiming paranormal experiences, should we even have tested for actual paranormal abilities uh, or should have we just simply re rejected the whole thing as pseudoscience um, right off the bat? And that includes. Um, all of Richard Wiseman's work, all the skeptic challenges, and all of Chris French's work, um, which have not been involved in trying to find uh, neurological causes, uh, um, i.e., any work which has been actually testing for paranormal claims, shouldn't we all, uh, by that same mechanism, shouldn't we all uh, toss it all down the toilet uh, under the same boat as parapsychology as being pseudoscience and start from scratch again, trying to develop a theory of how um, such a thing might work from the physical world, and then attempting to test that? I don't know. Um, just a thought. It's it's been rattling in the back of my mind lately, and I'm beginning to question um, a large chunk of the arguments that skepticism has been taking against this field. Um, you know, in terms of it being a pseudoscience, um, on the same grounds that apparently a double standard is being applied. I I don't know. Uh, post in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Um, I'd be interested in hearing fellow skeptic opinions if there actually is a difference. And no, and please, no claims of oh well because our methodology is automatically better. Give me a demonstration of where we know the methodology is better. Is it just better because of a negative result? You know, it, it's, you know, how do these criticisms, uh, uh, um, how are these criticisms exempt in skeptic work but problematic in parasite?